season coming up, figured it'd be a good time to get back in the swing of things. And so um, if you're just checking this out for the first time on the Facebook, welcome to Mason Aaron Racing Videos. I am, of course, a Mason. You've probably seen me at the racetrack if we have met before, or if not, you'll probably see me at various racetracks throughout the summer. And so um, got a fun guest with us here tonight. And before we get into the interview, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, I'm putting in an order for stickers that you can put on your race car. Same colors as the last few years, blue, white, pink, orange, yellow, and green, and also adding fluorescent red. And so um, thank you to Mike Speaker for doing the stickers up for me this year. So if you want any, let me know how many and what colors you want. It's one for three or two for five. That just all goes in back into the racing fund for my travels, pit passes, et cetera. And so with that, we'll transition over to our guest. You've probably seen this gentleman at the racetrack a time or two throughout the last several years. Uh, a lot of years behind the wheel, a lot of veteran experience. Mr. Todd Carter, number 19 out of Lisbon, North Dakota. Todd, how are you doing this evening? Doing good, Mason. Doing real good. Good deal. And it's a, it's been a beautiful day. I'm sure it's been beautiful down in Lisbon today. Uh, it's nice to see the weather transitioning towards racing season. Right. Uh, I was actually working in Fargo today, and it, it was a beautiful day. Yeah, it's definitely uh, kind of gets me a little really amped up for the racing season, but almost I uh, I wish I had a few more weeks to kind of get things ready. <laughs> yeah, you and a lot of other people, I think, Mason. Uh, I'm I'm pretty fortunate. My, my stuff is about ready to go, but I got my son's car out in the garage. Garage is still sitting there with a lot of work left to do. Yeah, I, I I would I'd say if you were part of the racing family, if we weren't at least a little bit behind in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> no, that's for sure. Yeah. Although I've kind of noticed that you tend to be like one of those drivers that's kind of like ready, like right away, or you kind of are on top of your stuff more often than not. Yeah, I try to be anyway. Uh, I I try to try to get going fairly early in the winter and and service my stuff and get get it ready to go so a guy doesn't have that big push in the spring that always nerve-wracking uh and i i like to be ready for the first first shows of the year those those are always a good time yeah i definitely have a few early shows coming up within the next couple weeks and uh, we'll probably touch on that a little bit so if you're watching be sure to say hi let us know you're watching if you have a question for todd be Feel free to drop it in the comments, especially hello to the Mr. Steven Ader. Steven Ader saying hi. So Evo. Howdy, buddy. howdy, buddy. Hope to see you in a few short weeks as well. And so I guess to start this interview, uh, Todd, I'll put it this way. You have a lot of experience behind the wheel. Kind of yeah, tell us about I've been doing it a couple been doing it a couple of years. Yeah, exactly. I, this, kinda... uh, this spring will be. This spring will be 45. We'll start in our 45th season. Wow. That's awesome. That's a, that's a lot of years behind the wheel. Uh, what classes have you all raced in that span? Oh, boy. We've tried a little bit of everything. You know, I started out in what, what we, I guess you'd call a bomber car, and then we moved to street stocks, and then we raced, uh, they were called, we called them late models. They were uh, They were like a big block stock clip car they were they were really fun uh fast cars big tires uh, and after that what the heck did i do i got then i went into the super stock i guess and raced that for several years and then got a wild hair and tried the late model scene for the real late models and ran that until i was almost broke and then got back in the supers and I raced supers for another oh, 15, 15 years. And then Lisbon, the numbers dwindled in Lisbon and I was uh, fortunate enough to have a guy that wanted my car. So I sold it and then I jumped in that way. So street stock or no, wait a minute. I, then I think I tried the modified I bought Jarrett's modified from him and ran that, and that fit. That wasn't a very good fit. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't like the modified. Uh, uh, we raced that just the one year, I think. Then I got sold that. Got 
a white soda street stock and I've been racing that since. Uh, and then last fall, uh, Joey Didi had been after me to buy my streeter. So I, I actually sold my streeter to Joey Didi and I picked up a IMCA stock car. So I'm going to give that a whirl this spring. There you go. You just wanted to add another uh, racing class to your repertoire <laughs> yeah. of cars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the only thing we haven't drove is a sprint car. And, and I don't think I would fit real well in a sprint car. I'm a little bit too, too big on the size there, I think. <laughs> yeah sprint cars are a different animal especially uh, yeah I, don't, I people tell me it's like we need to get you in a, a sprint car mason and i've I, oh boy yeah i've driven a hobby stock i've driven a stock car and i'm like i don't necessarily have the interest for a sprint car i always said i'd like to drive one but i wanted to be all by myself i didn't want no nobody else out there because that they they look wicked to me yeah, yeah, definitely would love to have a little bit more control or certainty on where you're going to end up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was hoping to get my uh, streaming software set up because I had a little highlight video kind of showing a few of the classes you raced. I got, I see. Got some of your super stock racing, your little stint in the modified as well, and of course the Wissota Street Stock. And so definitely have seen you around the track quite a bit, especially. And so being around... Right. Being around Lisbon, North Dakota, obviously, that's been one of your home tracks for years. Where else did you typically race? Oh, I guess we started out basically racing just Lisbon and uh, and uh, Jamestown. And way back in the day, we were racing Wishick when Wishick just ran a couple shows a year. We'd race our streeter out there, too. Um, and then I guess once we got going in the super, we raced Aberdeen, Huron, uh, and then we a couple of years there we went north. We raced Grand Forks, Devil's Lake, uh, Hallock, Botno. Uh, it was pretty pretty good grind that one summer. We ran I think we ran seventy. 70 plus shows that one summer uh but we had a pretty good gig going on there we'd race we'd race grand forks on friday go to devil's lake on saturday and then come home on and race lisbon on sunday so we were racing those three and then we'd pick up another show, show sometime during the during the week there too more than likely uh and then we race we race west fargo oh shoot a lot with with a outlaw street car with that late model hobby stock whatever they called it and then i raced what the white soda super stock there quite a bit too we we won we won a lot of races in west fargo too yeah you kind of had like a like a nice ideal like schedule especially since like you live in lisbon and that ra track races on sunday night so you only had like a five or ten minute drive home yeah right <laughs> yeah yeah we're too we're two miles from the racetrack, so it, it, uh, and I've always Lisbon's always been my favorite. I mean, I got thousands and thousands and thousands of laps on that place. I say between you and Jerry Lamb, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it'd, it'd be interesting to see the lap count at that speedway. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Jerry's got more for sure because he's got a he's got a million in the blade too. Oh, that's true. Yes, <laughs> that is yeah. true. He's got that on you. Yeah. Well, we got a lot of people tuning in. I don't want to try miss out on any of the questions from the audience. So uh, Stephen Ayer was asking if you remember racing his dad back in the day. Oh, yeah. I raced Norm in the super stock and in the late model. So, yeah, I raced, I raced him in Grand Forks and I raced him in West Fargo for sure. It's fun. It's fun for me, especially like since I, I didn't really grow up here in Fargo where I live currently and kind of getting to know like a little bit more of the history and kind of like the cars that used to race and kind of like the iconic names that you hear from like out in Western North Dakota where I grew up. And it's like, oh, hey, this is where they all kind of race around this area. So it's kind of cool to kind of learn that as I've lived here longer and longer. Mm -hmm. 
So we got a bunch of people tuning in. We got the likes of Royce Jawowski, Andy Faber, Eric Rice, some guy named Johnny Carter. Oh, I don't know that guy. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, I, 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 I'd have to look into that that guy. Um, <laughs> Royce, Royce is saying you just need a two seater sprint car. Oh, me and him. Oh gosh, that'd be a combination. <laughs> they'd have to put some. They'd have to put some springs in that baby if me and Rice got in it. <laughs> that'd be a fun. That'd be fun to see for sure. <laughs> Oh gosh, Johnny, uh, this might be a tough question, but uh he's asking what is your most memorable win? Ooh. Probably anytime I beat him, I'm not sure. No. Ah, uh, memorable win. Probably the first stampede I won would probably be one of the one of the big ones. Uh I did that with with that big block, late model hobby stock car, they called them, yeah. I was, I was right. One of the legends from town here, Steve Hansen, was he was really tough in that class, and he actually was driving Bobby Sagan's Bobby stock that for that stampede, and Steve led, geez, he led. I think we ran thirty laps or whatever it was, thirty three laps maybe, and uh, he led. I think I passed him with two or three to go and and got the win. And I'll <laughs> never forget he come over, you son of a bitch. He says, I almost had that one. Yeah, I'm sure it's a bummer, especially for the stampede when you lose yeah. it within the last couple of laps, because that's yeah. a hard race to win. Right. Yeah. We've been fortunate. We've had really good success at that race. And and oh I don't know. I that track fits my driving style I, I always always run fairly well there with whatever we drive yeah definitely uh definitely seen you put on a good show there in jamestown especially uh let's just say johnny's lucky that he, that the pre-show highlight video didn't get posted because it did have a win down in brown county that i'm sure johnny wishes he had back <laughs> uh so andy is andy favor checking in wondering if we're ready to start the season for both myself and Todd I know I'm I'm pretty much ready to go I still have a lot to work on leading up until the first race or two of the season but I'm I'm ready to kick things off what about you Todd for sure we're uh I think we're I'm planning on hitting Mandan on the is it the 19th I think uh, yep. they got their meltdown deal uh I don't know I have it I have yet to drive this this stock car we got it last fall and Jared actually raced it. He ran he ran it in Mandan at the last show, and then he raced it at Stampede. And uh, so I'm I'm kind of excited. I don't know if I'm excited enough to drive out there for their test and tune next weekend, but uh, I I might get stupid and do that. <laughs> go out and make some laps. Well, I was kind of silly myself on Easter when I was here in Fargo in the morning and then my friends invited me over for their Easter dinner near Bismarck and so oh yeah I made, yeah. made a day trip out of it why not right right we'll have to see what's going on with Jared's car if he needs help uh, we'll we'll see but I, I I wouldn't mind getting a couple laps on it before I have to race it right uh, especially with a with a new car new class new everything. yeah yeah Eric Rice checking in. He's uh, kind of reminiscing about some memories. Remembers you racing uh, Dale, Brett Nesset in the street socks at Red River Valley Speedway. Just a couple of the names. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was back in the Outlaw Streeters. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that would have been a fun those, class to watch. Those two, they were, though, that was a really fun class. They're, they're, they're a little bit like this stock car deal. They're, you know, they had a lot more adjustability in them and stuff. So, yeah, those were, they were a fun class. That, yeah. Well, now that you're an IMCA stock car, obviously you're, you like have a whole different set of tracks that you could race at, all sorts of different races that you could go to. Uh, Ryan Ost checking in is wondering if you, you're planning to go down to Super Nationals this year. Mm. If I go, it will not be with my race car. I, I, I we've been going we've went the last six six seven years we go down for that week and watch but 
I don't think I'd ever take my race car there. <laughs> Understand why. <laughs> unless I could get unless I could get Johnny talked into coming down and driving it, maybe then I'd take it. <laughs> <laughs> I say you gotta it's kind of one of those races where you you go down, but you probably don't expect to have it all in one piece by the end of the week. No, that's for sure. I, I've seen a I've seen a lot of wrecked equipment at that race for sure. Yeah, I mean it's a spectacle. I haven't been down there. I've just been watching on TV for the most part the sure. last several years. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of racing. It's almost a lot of racing, even for for me. It's just like, man, do I really want to be <laughs> yeah. consuming racing from three to potentially three in the morning? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and uh, we got more people checking in, including Troy Cpac, Al Schmidt, all drivers. I'm sure you've raced in at one point or another. For sure, Al. I raced Al back in the day, and he's he's a long timer, just like I am. I, I he's he's got a couple years on me, actually. I think he's maybe got forty six, forty seven, possibly. Yeah, I think I remember Scott Ward saying he's around 47 or 48 years in racing. And still okay, is, yeah. So got, uh, nice. so got a little bit to catch it up to do to him. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of wanted to ask you a little bit about, like, you know, Lisbon and kind of like this year's racing. Obviously, with you being in the Wissota Street Stock, it was one of your home tracks. You could race pretty easily. A little bit of transition this year for Cheyenne Speedway with the new ownership with the big curves and whatnot. And mm -hmm. so I'm sure at first it's like, yeah, I might not be able to race at your home track a whole lot, but now it looks like you could be able to race there. Right, right. Yeah, I was I was glad when Jake came out with the schedule and they, that we were on there for every night that we get to race, I guess. That was cool. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure you've been kind of been like seeing all the transitions from different ownership groups to like boards and stuff and how the tracks kind of transition. So not great when a track could possibly sit dormant. And so it's awesome to see someone no, pick it up. Definitely. You know, uh, I've seen a lot of people complaining that there's only five shows, you know, or whatever. Well, five shows is a lot better than grass growing on it, you know. And and actually, we didn't run that many shows last year either, if you really look at it. I mean, it, I, what, we run seven or eight shows, you know, so it isn't that much different. But like I say, better than the grass growing up on it. And that's what I really was afraid of. Yeah, and even like up in Red River Valley Speedway, that track sat dormant for a year or so, and so it's like it it sucks. Yeah. It's not fun yeah, to see tracks dormant. Sure. So it's awesome. Like yeah. pe people like change is tough for a lot of people, I'm sure, and so it'll probably get a little bit tough to get used to for some people. But I, I'm excited for this year down in Lisbon. I think it's gonna be. Fun. I think it'll be. I think it'll be good. I I, I really do. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Jordan Kino was checking in, wondering if you're going to run IMCA or Wissota. So you have an IMCA stock car now, as we've been kind of alluding to, and it's already right. already looks pretty sharp too. It looks really nice. Yeah, yeah. I took it down last Friday. I took it to Aberdeen and had Mike Stearns at Extreme Graphics. Him and I stickered it up, and it it really did turn out nice. Uh, Jarrett kind of Jarrett kind of had found a picture of a late model. Of, I don't even. I might might have been a Jackson or something like that with that stripe. I I normally haven't had any graphics at all. We put that little black stripe on there, and it it really. I think it looks pretty cool, and it, other than other than that, it's pretty plain, but easily easy to read and i think it's going to show up on the speedway really well yeah and i was as i was kind of telling you before we even got on that like i like the simple looking schemes it looks like a really nice yeah. simple race car uh only thing i'm a little bit nervous about mason the last time i had red on my on my streeter i got totaled out the first night in jamestown so that's the only thing i'm a little bit nervous about Hopefully we can get through that first weekend without getting wrecked and then I'll then I'll get the monkey off my back. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We want to keep the keep the car in, in one piece to yeah, for a little yeah. bit to start the year. 
Right uh, Troy, on. Troy Jervitz checking in. I don't know if you've met Troy before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That Troy do my shock absorbers, actually, in my street stock for a while. Okay, nice. You could, yeah. could have an opportunity to raise him at some point. Possibly. That Me and Johnny have been talking about that, you know, uh, just getting in the truck and heading to Iowa for a weekend and running some of those tracks that you that you dream about racing at, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Just not the super nuts. Well, Johnny did say he will drive if he doesn't have to, if he doesn't have to cover the bill. Oh, well, we'll have to think about that then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh that that'll be that would be fun. Uh, Royce is also saying you could now go down to Arizona in January taking some sunshine. Yeah, too. and that's that's kind of a bucket list deal too. Uh maybe throw them in and and go down there for that one speed week deal they got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely know, a lot Dwayne, of racing. Dwayne Waitson is a buddy of mine, and he's he's been after me for the last few years to to bring, like when Jared had his modified, he wanted to, us to bring that mod down there and race it, you know. But tough to get away from work, and Jared does a ton of wrestling tournaments during the winter, so it's hard for him to get away too, so... One of these, one of these winners, though, we're gonna try and get down there. Well, it's fun because with you and Jerry, it's it's pretty much a team deal. Like you guys go pretty much everywhere together, right? For sure. I mean that that we Jared grew up. He grew up at the racetrack. He, I don't, I don't know that he's missed too many that I've raced at that since he's been alive. You know what I mean? So, and we don't have. We don't have big pit crew or anything like that. It's me and Jarrett, my wife, and once in a while, my father-in-law, you know. Uh, but that's that's about it. We kind of do it all together, and that's kind of all we do during the summer. You know, we don't, have, we don't, we aren't big lake people or any, you know, uh, just this is what we do. Hey, have, that's <laughs> nothing wrong met with my that. Wife at, met my wife at the racetrack, and we've been together ever since you know and that's the key deal if, if if you got a wife that likes it and will let you do it that's 99 percent of the battle you know <laughs> i i see some of these guys that their old ladies don't like it i can't imagine i i would have quit a long time ago you know but he likes it just as much as we do so that's awesome that, yeah, exactly well, and Johnny had a question a few minutes ago. I almost skipped over it and forgot about it. But uh, since you've been racing for 45 years, he was wondering who your idols were while you were cutting your teeth. Mm. Well, back back in when we were, we'd go to we'd go to West Fargo every Friday night, and sit in the grandstands and watch. And uh, Jack McDonald was a was a huge idol. Uh, Ronnie Olson. Back in the day, uh, Troy Olson's dad raced. He was, he was, and and Mitchell. I mean, I uh, those those three were probably, you know, uh, locally here. Uh, I was Duffy Duffy Fromke's dad, Steve. I I worked for I worked for Steve when I was a teenager, and he he was always good to me and and i hung out with him a lot you know so i guess locally it would have been the Frompke boys steve jeff brad reg all all four of them they were they were good guys <clears throat> nice yeah it's it's kind of crazy to hear some of the names and just think of like man there's some, yeah. some real hot shoes back then yeah for sure well, as we kind of get into 2024, and obviously you'll be racing in Lisbon when they have the stock cars there, which is every night. Mm -hmm. Where else do you plan on racing this year? Well, I think I think we're probably going to run Mandan quite a bit on Friday nights. I I love that place. I mean, it's always it's always smooth and slick, and and uh, I mean we've been we've been going out there with the streeter and whatnot for several years you know and I, I really like that place so uh we'll probably race 
the majority of the Friday nights at Mandan. And when they're not racing, we'll definitely be in West Fargo. And then probably run Ada whenever work allows it uh, on Thursday nights. And then, like I say, we, me and Johnny had talked about that getting in the truck and going to Iowa for a weekend or whatever. So just do do some of that kind of stuff. Well, it's nice to kind of have something new to kind of freshen things up a little bit and break up that sure, monotony. Sure. Maybe try and get, you know, if we run man down on Friday night, maybe we'll stay out there and do Dickinson on Saturday a time or two, you know, just to help support those guys a little bit too. Yeah, definitely. There's, especially when you get out West, there's definitely opportunities in diff- different yeah. tracks that you probably haven't tried out yep. yet. Yeah, for sure. Any plans to maybe follow the, uh, cold classic modifying stock car tour at all yeah i think i think we probably will do that you know um for sure nice i think i've caught up on questions right now i want to give you an opportunity to list off any sponsors that are joining you for this season or anyone that's helped you out in the past at all that helps your racing program for sure yeah uh i've been really fortunate i've had i've had a lot of my sponsors have been with me for a lot of years, you know, uh, but I guess I'll just start. Uh, I got signature design and home remodel, uh, Derek Bernstein. He, he's, he's been with me now for, Oh, quite a few, quite a few summers. He, he's a good dude and, and is pretty generous. Uh, Matt Clausen, Clausen farms. he, He's a cousin of mine and and he he's pitted for me off and on for years and we kind of got his kid kid going in a uh mini stock here a couple years ago. So that's been fun. But Matt's on there, uh Mayor's Crop Insurance, Lisbon Vision Center, uh Main Street Farm and Home in Lisbon. Those guys have been pretty darn good to us uh got a new one this year it's uh midtown heating and air conditioning in fargo uh guy that we do quite a bit of work with in fargo uh my mother-in-law um we call it linda lou motorsports she's she's always been been good to support us uh got mikey down at extreme graphics uh he he keeps the cars looking pretty sharp uh humps bar and grill and milner um those those guys are good good people uh um uh i want to give a shout out to qual dairy uh those guys i think i've had them for 30 years and and this year we we uh decided that or they decided that they were going to cut out all their uh extra spending but i want to throw a shout out to them because they've been with me for a lot of years and i really appreciated them but that's pretty much what i got on on the car like i say i've had most of those some of those are 20 20 plus years that, that i've had the same guys so yeah that's awesome you got a good team yeah, behind you sure. and a lot of a lot of local local yeah. guys too yeah for sure well one of the last questions i had for you is i know you get uh i don't know if it's johnny that says it but i hear the nickname beaver yeah how, yeah. how did you come up how did that nickname come about oh boy i don't know it, it was a something that i got when i was a toddler i mean i i was just a two years old probably my brother my older brother i don't know if i was chewing on furniture or what the hell I was doing, but how, whatever it's stuck. And I've had it. I've had it ever since. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I hear it every once in a while and I'm just like, that's interesting. I'm like, I, I can't correlate it with anything. So. Yeah. 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 A lot of people don't, a lot of people don't know my real name. That's in, in town here that I get. Yeah. I, that's what most people call me in town. <laughs> that's fun though that's awesome yeah that's cool uh andy's asking have you heard of a test and tune at all in lisbon this year well i haven't not yet i haven't 
Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard either. Um I talked yeah. to Jake. I talked to Jake probably two, three weeks ago or whatever, and he was uh he was talking about possibly getting a few loads of dirt still to get worked in up there. So uh I don't know. Okay. Nice. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they how they transition with the with the track this year. Sure, oh sure. Kyle Dykoff sneaking in one more question. Uh oh. What is Todd's favorite racetrack and why? Oh, my favorite racetrack is at home here, and everybody knows that. Uh, it just, I don't know. It, it's a special place for me. I, I logged so many laps and won so many races. Uh, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, there's, there's others like Mandan, I I really really like Mandan, and Jamestown used to be used to be a real favorite of mine. Uh, not so much anymore. I don't know they they've reshaped that thing, so I don't think it's real racy. Uh, I wish they'd take about ten feet of the banking back out of it, so you could race it instead of having to run that high side and let it rubber up and. I'd just assume they took some of the banking out of it and, and made it more more of a driver's track again. Right now, it's whoever can go the fastest, it seems like. Gotcha. Yeah, it's but, hard to beat home tracks, I, though. Yeah, for sure. Like I say, it, uh, I I remember Kyle coming to, coming to Lisbon and he didn't like, Kyle didn't like Lisbon, you know, when he first, when he first started coming. And then that one night, him and Johnny ran uh, one of them street stock tour races, I believe it was, or a uh, hell of a race. Some guys raced side by side by side, you know, and it was, and then I talked to him afterwards and he had a little more of a grin on his face that night. So <laughs> takes a little bit to get used to Lisbon and used to some For of the sure. around here. For sure. Yeah. Uh, when Liz. When Lisbon is smooth and and slick and racy, you can't beat the racing on it. I mean, uh, back a couple years ago when Johnny and myself and Eric Riley, I think I think we ran 15, 18 laps side by side, and I don't know that we ever ever touched. And I mean, yeah, that had to have been one of the one of the races of the year, I would think, for any track that 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 show we put on that night. That was that was a heck of a show. Yep. That one definitely I think I you were there. I remember the one last year with you, Kyle and Johnny for the Street Stock tour. That was that yeah. was a fun show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, Lisbon Lisbon puts out some good races. Uh, don't discount right. the small town tracks. I'm uh I'm excited to get I had shoulder surgery last summer, so I was out. I was out. I think the last race I ran was the street stock tour race in Lisbon. That was the last race that I got to, that I got to run last year. Okay. So I'm excited to get back in it. Yeah. Get, get the itch going back and, uh, right. Excited to see you start the season. Hopefully in just a couple short weeks, I heard they were working on the track this last week. So. Yep. I got a, I got a snap from Bubba yesterday. He, he was sheep's footing out there. So that's encouraging. You bet. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, want to appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule to chat with us and get to know you a little bit and excited for the new chapter of racing for in your 45th year. Yeah, that'll be cool. I think be excited to see you too. Can't wait to get back to the track for sure. <laughs> thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks for all the comments and questions and uh, looking forward to seeing you all at the track soon or with another interview, hopefully in the coming weeks. And so, Take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the off season.